How are you guys? Welcome to Audrey's Reading Area. You will enjoy all the books that I have and I'm reading. I have over 350 videos on my YouTube channel, Audrey's Reading Area, and it doesn't cost a thing to subscribe. Free. Yes. So please, 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 you guys, go ahead and subscribe for me. Thank you. Today is Wednesday, so do you guys remember what I do on Wednesdays? Yes, I do Multicultural Awareness Wednesdays. Multicultural Awareness Wednesdays. Beautiful day to share other people's cultures and things that, you know, the way other people live and stuff. So I have a very exciting, fun, and exciting book that I'll be reading to you today. Yes. Rabbi Benjamin's Buttons. Rabbi Benjamin's Buttons. It says it's written by Alice B. McGinty, illustrated by Jennifer Black Reinhardt, Rabbi Benjamin's Buttons. Oh yeah, let's see what this one brings to us. So on the back, it says, I don't know what it means, Etrog Jelly. It says, Caraset. It says, Delta Fish. Delta fish, Delta fish. It says fruit strudel. Fruit strudel, okay. So I guess those are the little uh, stains on the back. They're naming them. So Rabbi Benjamin's buttons. It says, um, I'm going to read these little notes at the end of the book. I'm just going to jump into the book so that you guys can enjoy. Ra it says Rabbi Benjamin loved his synagogue on Walnut Street. Walnut Street, yes, Walnut Street. With a warm, white smile, he welcomed everyone who entered. A happy congregation is the sunshine of my heart, the rabbi said. You are the sunshine of our hearts, the congregation told Rabbi Benjamin. That's why in the autumn, to celebrate the new Jewish year, they made the rabbi a special holiday vest fastened in the front with four shiny silver buttons. How the rabbi smiled when he put on that beautiful vest. It fit just right. Dressed proudly in his new vest, Rabbi Benjamin led Rosh Hashanah services. After the shofar had sounded to welcome the new year, Everyone celebrated in the very best way with lots of holiday food. Try my mama's apple tort, said Mrs. Bergman's youngest boy. When the rabbi did, oh, how Mrs. Bergman smiled. Oh, how Mrs. Bergman smiled. Mrs. Mushnick grinned when, her, when he praised her delicious honey cake. And the whole Goldwasser family glowed when he dipped slices of their homegrown apples into sweet, sweet honey. Rabbi Benjamin rejoiced with his happy congregation and ate until his holiday vest stretched tightly across his belly. <laughs> During Sukkot, or Sukkot, the, uh, the Autumn Festival of the Harvest, Rabbi B Benjamin visited a different family sukkah each night. A sukkah. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Sukkah each night. Sitting in their sukkah under starry skies, they sang songs of Thanksgiving and ate meals of squash, stuffed cabbage, and sweet potato pie. Mm. The rabbi ate and sang until his holiday vest stretched very tightly across his belly again. <laughs> it stretched so tightly that on the last day of Sukkot, after a slice of Mr. Ho Mr. Hoover's fabulous fruit strudel, pop! One of the four shiny silver buttons popped off and landed splat in the etrog jelly. Rabbi Benjamin gasped and covered his belly with lulav leaves. Has anyone noticed? The next day he fixed his vest with a good strong pin. In 
in the winter, in the winter came Hanukkah, the festival of lights. To remember the miracle of the oil that burned on the ancient temple for eight days and nights, the congregation lit the menorah, spun the dreidel, and ate lots of latkes. Oi, yoy, yoy, the rabbi groaned. His vest stretched tight as he sampled lot, latka after latka, the crispiest one of all, fried by three grinning Goldwasser girls. Have another, they chanted, so he did. Then, on the last night of Hanukkah, right in the middle of a blessing, pop! It happened again. The second shiny silver button popped off and sank. Kerplunk. <laughs> And the applesauce, Rabbi Benjamin gulped and hid behind the menorah. When he arrived home, he replaced the missing button with his very best tally clips. Wow. See his button? His button popped off. <laughs> so it was spring and time to celebrate Passover. Rabbi Benjamin sucked in his stomach and put on his holiday vest. He buttoned the last two buttons, clipped the clips, pinned the pin, and hoped for the best. <laughs> At the Goldwasser's house, they read from the Passover, Haggadah, sang songs, and ate the traditional cedar meal to remember when the Jewish people had been slaves. How the Goldwasser girls flushed with pride when the rabbi said their charoset had just the right mix of apples and nuts. When Rabbi Benjamin spread horseradish, horseradish or Mr. Mushnick's jagilta fish patties, the littlest Mushnick smiled. And my, did Mrs. Bergman beam when the rabbi slipped her scrumptious matzo ball soup. Mm -mm. A happy congregation is the sunshine of my heart, the rabbi said. He ate and ate until pop, pop. The last two shiny silver buttons popped off his vest. The first landed plop in the horseradish. The second landed splish splash in the cup set aside for Elijah the prophet. The rabbi gasped and hid behind the matzo box, the matzo box. Mm -mm. Rabbi Benjamin said a few quick goodbyes and hurried home, frowning all the way. Oi, 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 what a mess, he cried. I've ruined my special holiday vest. And there it is. <laughs> Rabbi Benjamin could have frowned all summer long. But as he scrubbed, scrubbed, scrubbed his vest, he had an idea. Rabbi Benjamin asked the Hoovers if he could help plant their garden to make a big harvest for next Sukkot. He helped Mrs. Bergman hide boxes of Hanukkah presents from her boys. He hiked with the Mushkins, the Mushniks, to the lake and caught carp for next Passover's gefilte fish patties. He helped the Goldwasher family harvest homegrown apples for Rosh Hashanah. The rabbi planted and picked and sweetened and fished all summer and into the autumn. On the eve of Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Benjamin took out his holiday vest. He thought it would fit again, but what about the missing buttons? He tried new pins to fasten the vest, but it sagged. He tried tally clips and tie clips, but it scrunched. He tried string and even staples, but nothing worked. It will never be the same, he exclaimed. What can I possibly wear for the New Year's service when everyone will expect to see me dressed in my special holiday vest? Mm. 
Hmm, let's see what happens. Wow, illustrations are really nice in this book. It was then he heard a knock at his door. In marched the Goldwasser family, followed by the Hoovers, Mrs. Bergman and her boys, and all six muchniks. You are the sunshine of our hearts, the Goldwasser girls told the rabbi. So we brought you, we brought you a New Year's gift, said the littlest muchnik. Look at these illustrations, aren't they fabulous? The rabbi's eyes grew wide. <laughs> Inside the box was a brand new holiday vest, even lovelier than the first. And right in front were four very similar shiny silver buttons. Look at that. That evening, Rabbi Benjamin's smile was warm and wide, like that, as he welcomed his congregation to Rosh Hashanah services at the synagogue on Walnut Street. A happy congregation is the sunshine of my heart, the rabbi said. Such joy swelled in Rabbi Benjamin's chest that he almost popped a button on his brand new holiday vest. His congregation, and this is him. The end, oh, the end. So first I'm going to read you the little notes in the front and then I'm going to read you the little notes on the back. It says, pot love, lucky Rabbi Benjamin. Every member of his congregation is a good cook. That's why his buttons kept popping off, right? You can't stop eating when the food is so good. It says, every member of his congregation is a good cook. And as the Jewish holidays arrive, they're all eager to celebrate in the very best way by sharing delicious food. It's kind of like my family. Everybody's a good cook and when we get together, it's awesome, awesome. By sharing delicious food, it says, Rabbi Benjamin's friends are good examples of the Jewish value of uh, Kol Yisrael, Arivim Zei Baza, and it means Hebrew for all of Israel is responsible for one another. I like that. This is generally understood to mean that every community member is expected to look out for and take care of each other. And that's exactly what happens in this story. Sometimes with accompanying apple torte, sweet pumpkin pie, and crispy latkes. This is too much of a good thing. This puts Rabbi Benjamin in a yummy pickle. <laughs> a yummy pickle. Jewish holidays are peppered throughout the year with festive occasions popping up in every season. And Rabbi Benjamin has a lot of friends. Oi, 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 groans Rabbi Benjamin as his lovely vest starts losing its buttons. In Jewish practice, it's not just our souls that we nurture, but our bodies as well. Rabbi Benjamin takes to the heart the Jewish obligations to take care of one's health. Known in Hebrew as Shmirat Hagof. That's why, rather than frown all summer long, he makes a point of getting outside and moving his body. It says it's continued on the back flap. Okay, the back. This flap, and it continues on this, this part here. Sharing is caring. Luckily, there are many opportunities for Rabbi Benjamin both to be healthy and to do mitzvot, Hebrew for commandments, or good deeds. By planting and picking and sweating and fishing. Rabbi Benjamin is not only being healthy and active, he's also giving back to his community, not to mention having fun with the people he cares about. Celebrating holidays in the very best way isn't so much about food, after all, it's about being together with loved ones. Turns out that taking care of others and oneself can be deliciously rewarding. Wow, nice. It says, talk it over with your kids now. It says, Rabbi Benjamin thinks of his congregants as the sunshine of his heart. And they think the same of him. Who is the sunshine of your heart? What food do you like to eat during holidays? Goodness, we don't have enough time for me to name these foods. Do you do any of the things Rabbi Benjamin does to stay active? And what else do you do? Hmm, look at this. 
I'm going to show you the back part. It talks about Hanukkah. So Hanukkah is the eight-day Jewish festival of lights and takes place in winter. The holiday celebrates the victory of Judah and the Maccabees against the Syrian army when they fought to defend their right to practice Judaism. When the Jewish people took back the temple of Jerusalem, they lit the eternal light using a tiny bit of oil left. While the messenger sent to get more oil was gone, a miracle happened. The tiny bit of oil lasted for eight days and nights until the messenger returned. Each evening during Hanukkah, an additional candle is lit in the menorah to remember each night the oil lasted. People eat potato pancakes called latkes, which are fried in oil and served with sour cream and applesauce. Oh, it sounds so good. The three Golasa Girls crispy potato latkes, it has the recipes for these things. I will show it to you. You can pause and make it. All right, pause. Now it says Passover. It talks about Passover. Passover or Pesach is an eight-day holiday that starts with a cedar meal and includes the retelling of the Jewish people's freedom from slavery in Egypt. Special foods include horseradish as a reminder of the bitterness of slavery, parsley and eggs dipped in salt water as a reminder of the tears shed by the slaves, and matzo to remember how the Jewish slaves fled from Egypt without time to let their bread rise before baking. I never knew that. Okay. I knew about the matzo crackers, matzo crackers, but I didn't know it was um, to remember how the Jewish slaves fled from Egypt without time to let their bread rise before baking. Learn something new every day. And then it has Mrs. Bergman's Magnificent Matzo Ball Soup recipe. And here it is. If you can see it, you can pause it, and you can make it and call me to come over and taste it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The glossary. There's a glossary. Let me read you some of these words. Cha, cha, I said charoset. Let me show you the glossary first. And you can pause it as I read these things. So I said charoset, but the C is silent and it's pronounced haroset. It's a mixture of chopped apples, nuts, cinnamon, and wine eaten at Passover. It serves as a reminder of the mortar the slaves used when they built brick pyramids as Egyptian slaves. Dreidel. It's a small four-sided spinning top used in a game of chance at Hanukkah. Dreidel. Elijah's cup. It's a ceremonial cup of wine poured during a Passover cedar, left untouched in honor of Elijah the prophet, who will arrive one day to announce the arrival of the Messiah. I said etrog, it's pronounced itrog, itrog. It's a type of citrus fruit that is a symbol of sukkot. Sukkot. Okay, hmm. Gefilte, gefilte, gefilte fish. I'm saying it right now. Gefilte fish. It's a poached mixture of ground fish served as a Passover appetizer. Gefilte fish. Hagada. The special text followed during a Passover cedar. Latka is a fried potato pancake eaten at Hanukkah. Latka. Lulav. Lulav is a cluster of palm myrtle and willow leaves. It's a symbol of sukkah. Matzah. It's an unleavened bread eaten during Passover. Menorah. It's a ceremonial candle holder. The, the Hanukkah menorah holds nine candles. Eight for each night of Hanukkah and one to light the others. So one in the middle you take out and you light the others. Okay, each day. A Seder. I said cedar. Seder. A ceremonial dinner held on the first nights of Passover. Hmm. Shofar. Shofar. It's a ram's horns blown on Rosh Hashanah to welcome the New Year's. The New Year. Sukkah. Plural Sukkot. It's a small hut built by families in their yards during the Sukkot holiday under which meals are eaten with invited guests. Hmm. Okay. Synagogue. Does anybody know what a synagogue is? 
That's right. A synagogue is a Jewish house of worship. Okay. Talis, talis clips. Small clips used to keep the talis, it's a fringed prayer shawl, in place as it hangs over the shoulder of the wearer. Wow, how interesting is this? So to make a new sew vest, here are instructions and you can pause and make it, pause and make it if you like. It gives you instructions on how to make it supplies. It's, you need an old oversized t-shirt, scissors, newspaper, and fabric markers. Fold the t-shirt so the sleeves overlap, cut both sleeves off above the shoulder, the shoulder seam. It says cut them off. It says, I'm trying to show you the front of the book to see his vest. It says fold the t-shirt so the sleeves overlap, cut both sleeves off above the shoulder seam. Like this picture here says. Then it says, now fold the t-shirt so that the middle is creased down the center. Cut along the center crease about an inch in. Let me show you this again. Right here. Trim the bottom in a curve so that the front of the vest is longer. Here we go. Then it says, cut the collar out. Interesting. And then it says, spread newspaper over your workspace, then use the fabric markers to decorate your vest. Simply tie the front ends together and you are ready to go, ready to have special meals with the sunshine of your heart. Wow. Wow. What a fun and exciting book that was. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much for joining me here at Audrey's Reading Area. I enjoyed reading this book to you. Rabbi Benjamin, Benjamin's Button. Rabbi Benjamin's Buttons. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you again tomorrow live at 5. Live at 5 tomorrow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you soon.